Well, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on replacing missing values using SPSS. So oftentimes in counseling research, we set up research studies and due to circumstances beyond our control, we end up with missing data. And there are a wide range of circumstances that can occur that can lead to missing data, including data entry errors, or if you have participants that complete one post-test assessment, for example, but are unable to complete another. So we accept that this is part of research, and we have statistical methods for managing missing data in counseling research. So taking a look at the fictitious data I have loaded here in SPSS, you can see I have an ID variable, and there's 120 participants in this study, and two independent variables, and two dependent variables. And you can see I have some missing data scattered throughout both the functioning dependent variable and the motivation dependent variable. Now, with a small number, small n, like we have here, you can see fairly easily where the missing values are, what records contain missing values. But if this were a larger data set, you may want to perform a calculation to more easily recognize where the missing data are, meaning what records align with missing cells. So if we go to transform and compute variable, and I'll just use the functioning dependent variable as a test here, and we'll just call this new variable f1. And the numeric expression, we just go to all and scroll down to m. We're looking for missing, so we'll double click missing, and we'll drag over functioning. And then click OK. This is going to create a new variable uh, named f1. And you can see where there is a value in a particular cell, we have a 0. And where there's a missing value, we have a 1. So we can easily identify where missing values are. So I'm going to clear this variable. Next, I'm going to run from Analyze Descriptive Statistics and Descriptives. And I'm going to load both functioning and motivation into the variable list box. Under options, I'm not going to make any changes. Just click continue and then OK. And you can see here that we have, we know there's 120 records and we can see that we only have 115 showing as the end, so we know we have five missing here. And for motivation, we have 116. So we know that we have four missing values in the motivation variable. And then valid n list-wise is 111. So if I go back here to the data view, for a record to be considered valid list-wise, both of the variables need a value represented for a particular record. So if you look at 1008 here, we have a value for both functioning and motivation, but we do not for 1006. We have a value for functioning, but not for motivation. So this would not be valid list-wise. So there are 11 occasions here where we do not have a valid list-wise record. So if I were to move, let's say that uh, I take this 48 here, and I move it down here temporarily, and I delete it here. All right, so for 1006 to 1011, I've moved that value. So now uh, this is val valid list-wise, and of course this would continue to not be valid list-wise because both values are missing. So we'd expect, if I were to rerun descriptives, that we would have 112 
valid and listwise. Go to analyze and just go back and run the same analysis again and you can see I have 112 now. So there's still nine missing values but because the way they're arranged there's 112 valid n listwise. So going back uh, I'll replace the 48 and then delete that 48 to return it back to how it was originally. So now I'm going to go to Analyze Descriptive Statistics and Frequencies. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. I'm just going to move functioning and motivation over to uh, the variable list box. Under Statistics, this is what it looks like by default. Here I'm just going to add the mean, median, mode, and the standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and range. Click Continue. This is the information I like to see for variables at a minimum. So we can see at the top of the statistics table that it provides us the number missing. So for functioning, uh, it's 5, and for motivation, it's 4. Now we knew that by calculating it based on the descriptive statistics up here. But in, under frequencies, you can actually get the number missing reported like this. And then if you move down, to the end of the frequency tables for each variable, you can see that it gives you missing system 4.2%. Uh, so that's 5 divided by 120, the total number of records. 4.2% are missing. And then for motivation, we have 3.3% missing, or 4 divided by 120. So it's important to point out at this point, as we're looking at the percent missing, that in order to replace the missing values with the series mean, which is what I'm going to do in a few moments, you want the percent missing to be below 5%. And in these two cases, in, in the case of the functioning dependent variable, it's 4.2, and the motivation dependent variable is 3.3. So we're OK to move forward with replacing missing values with the series mean. So at this point, we could move directly to replacing the missing values. But first, I want to do a recode and demonstrate an important feature in SPSS for dealing with missing values. So looking at just uh, functioning, we'll go to transform and recode into same variables. And I'll reset this. So I'm just going to uh, focus on functioning here. So it's functioning. I'll move this over into numeric values. And then under old and new values, you can see we have the value, system missing, and system or user missing. So I'm going to check system or user missing. And here I want to put a value that would not occur in our measurement. So it's, it's not a value that would occur in the variable. So in this case, I'm going to use negative 1. So let's just assume that negative 1 is a value that could not occur in the variable functioning. And I'll hit Add. So missing now is going to change into negative 1. And it's, rec it's going to recode into the same variable. So it's not going to create a new variable. So I click Continue. And then hit OK. You can see recode functioning missing equals negative 1. That's the code. And then Execute. And I move over here, and I can see that the missing values have been replaced with negative 1. Now, if I were just to move forward now with different analyses, SPSS would treat the negative 1s that are here as valid data, as valid values. So I need to go to the variable view. And for functioning, you can see there is a column here missing. And under the functioning variable, I'm going to go to the missing column and click on the, the rectangle next to it. And you can see it has no missing values, discrete missing values, and then range. I'm going to hit discrete missing values and in this first box put negative 1.
So now SPSS will recognize this value as missing. Negative 1 is now a missing value. So if I were to go back to analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies, I don't need to run motivation for this. I'm just going to use functioning. And I'm going to look here. You see it's still recognizing that 4.2% are missing. But instead of saying missing system, it's saying missing negative 1. So now I'm going to move forward and replace the missing values. So it's going to be transform, replace missing values. I'll reset this. So I'm going to replace the missing values for functioning. Now this is going to create a new variable named functioning underscore 1. And it's going to use the series mean for the variable functioning. So I'll click OK. And you can see that the number of replaced missing values is 5. So I move back to here. We can see that where we had the negative 1, now the series mean has been put in that place. And I can also replace the missing values for motivation, even though I didn't do a recode in the same variables. I'll just go back to transform and replace missing values. I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to move motivation over. And again, I'm going to stay with the series mean. There are several options here. But I'm just going to stay with the series mean. And click OK. And you can see it replaced four missing values. Move back. You can see where the missing values were. Now the mean for motivation is in place of those missing values. I hope you found this video on replacing missing values using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.